coming up with Discover Why the Philippines is more prone to natural disasters compared to other countries. Durban volunteers in South Africa chemists for donations to help Typhoon Haiyan survivors in the Philippines. Welcome to Dial Headlines. I'm Helen Now. Thank you for joining us. Typhoon Haiyan has destroyed many schools in the central Philippines, and it is still quite difficult for these schools to reopen. However, Tungai Elementary School is now back in session thanks to the help of its faculty and parents. Here's more. The bell chimes to remind the students that classes are in session. We are here at Tunga Elementary School. This is their first day back. But in this third grade class, the attendance is only 20%. Of the 36 students enrolled in the class, only seven showed up. Still, this is better than the school's overall attendance average, which stands at 10%. They didn't take a leave of absence. My guess is that their homes are gone, so they can't come to school. Returning after a 20-day intermission, Rosa starts the first class by getting to know each student's situation. This little girl says her home was crushed by four coconut trees. Some students' homes were destroyed by the wind. The top student of the class, nine-year-old Mary Ann, says she must do her best to come to school. I must come to school and study hard because I want to be a teacher. Typhoon Haiyan tore apart the roofs of the classrooms and snapped most of the trees on campus in half. Knowing the importance of education, Principal Amalia reopened the school as quickly as possible. We Many parents came to help clean up the campus. They got rid of the fallen trees and tidied up the mess in the classrooms. For those students who couldn't go back to their original classrooms, the hallways and assembly hall became their new classroom. If it rains, they have to quickly relocate. Fortunately, Tsuji is donating nice simply built classrooms that will be ready for use in just a couple of days. To help those suffering from Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, people from around the globe have been giving their love and support to the hard-hit areas. With Tagalog and cities severely damaged, many areas, including San Jose, are still in need of assistance. Next, let's take a look at the current situation in San Jose. San Jose of Tagalogan City was once a place that mesmerized visitors with its scenic beauty. However, Typhoon Haiyan has destroyed everything along the coast. Buildings that once stood tall along the coast were completely destroyed by the giant sea waves of the devastating typhoon. Over here and over there, the water level was really high. When the typhoon came, the water reached the height of that tree. This road was completely destroyed. According to the local residents, San Jose is one of the areas in Tagalogan City that was severely damaged by Typhoon Haiyan. Due to a poor household registration system, the local government still can't provide an accurate death toll and number of missing residents. My son used to live over there, and this is where my husband and I used to live. Looking at what is left of her home, Emilda Pretensio describes for us what she has experienced during the disaster. My husband and I were trapped by the water, so we climbed to the rooftop. I held tight to my husband's hands when he passed away. The wood came down and hit his head. My neighbor and her daughter also lost their lives during this disaster. A family once filled with happiness and warm laughter was shattered by this typhoon. Despite suffering the loss of their loved ones, Emilda Prentencio's children have started to rebuild their homes. Without access to conventional building materials, this family has decided to use driftwoods, iron sheets and canvas provided by the UN to build their home. Upon hearing about their plight, city volunteers quickly arrived to express their condolences. This family is only left with the mother, older brother, young brother and sister. We are here to see what they need and what we can do to help. Worrying that there are still many places suffering as much as San Jose, international aid organizations will continue their effort to help disaster survivors so their lives can return to normal as soon as possible. 
The success of today's cash for work program can be felt and seen in the hot hit areas of the Philippines. The program was established at two new regions on December 2nd, including a more urban area of Tacloban City, a sacred hot college. Upon conducting a survey of the damage left behind by Typhoon Haiyan, Tsuji volunteers saw that the nearby church wall was also badly damaged. Besides cleaning up the school, volunteers will also see how Tsuji can help to restore the church so it can hold mass once again in hopes of providing spiritual and emotional support for local residents. In the Philippines, Tsuji's Cash for Work program has expanded to Tacloban City's Sacred Heart College. Many nearby residents arrive at the school early in the morning to help rebuild this institution. The school was kind enough to offer their premise for Tsuji to use. Any organization, if they want to use our school grounds, we will provide it without hesitation. This is our basic principle. Sacred Heart College is a Catholic school, and the nearby church is where the local residents go for mass. During a visit with the school's principal, Tsuji volunteers discover the church wall that faces the street was also badly damaged by Typhoon Haiyan. Yeah. Right away. Ah, yeah, so that, that there is a, a separation yeah. between outside and inside. And also it disturbs us. Whenever there is a ceremony, ah. there is a mass. So, people, so it's the fence and the roof and, and here it's okay, everything's well. So if you just take a look at the water, it's as high as that. Ah. Ah. Okay, so that's why water, this, this was... Can, can you point so. out? Mass has not been held since the church was damaged. However, local residents can still be seen praying at the church. I'm grateful for our blessings. Such a big typhoon damaged our homes, yet strangers are extending their hands to help us. After praying, I feel at peace in my heart because I can feel my God's presence in my heart. Previously, this church would be filled with so many people during Mass to the point where people would stand in the back. There are a lot of people, especially on Sundays, and many of them want to come back. Local residents are looking forward to returning to church as they seek solace in religion. And now in the aftermath of the disaster, it's all they have left. 90% of the Filipinos are Catholics. Religion is important to them as it is the core of their lives. It is where their roots are. We need to help them rebuild their church to give them a sense of stability. The church walls were damaged, so we are here to conduct a survey to see how much assistance we can provide and what type of help we can offer. In the process of enacting Tsuji's cash for work program, Tsuji volunteers are not only helping to clean up the hard hit areas, but also making sure that the survivor's emotional well being is being taken care of. On December 2nd, the Tsuji Philippines chapter extended their cash for work program to Tacloban City's Parangue 58. This area was once an active commercial district where most of the store and factory owners were predominantly Chinese. In the aftermath of the typhoon, most of these entrepreneurs escaped to surrounding cities to help with the cleanup of their homes as well as to contribute to economic recovery. Tsuji volunteers call on local residents to join in the efforts. Looking down Tacloban City's Barangay 58 is left in ruins. It's hard to imagine that this was once a bustling commercial district. Ruben, who has lived here for more than 50 years, told us that most of the store and factory owners here are mainly Chinese. A rice mill, stockyard of Maras Baras Rice Mill, a Chinese uh, company for about 50 years already. Then we have also the heavy equipment of Burawin Marketing Corporation. At the same time, they are a rice mill. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, most Chinese escaped to either neighboring cities or Manila, and this home built next to the factory once belonged to Mr. Lee. To stay in his, his house, but it is affected. He lives now in the city of Tacloban, in the other house in Tacloban City in Paterno. But he will come back after two hours to fix the things in his uh, uh, main house. It was not only Chinese entrepreneurs that incurred losses, but locals as well. Isabella once ran a grocery store which was destroyed in the disaster. Now she lives in a tent nearby. That's how you run away. Run. Water. Oh. So before the water hit your house, you start to run. Oh, Why yes. you heard the sound? You heard the wave? 
the strong winds. Philippines City volunteers plan to begin with cleanup efforts and implement the cash for work program here to help with economic recovery. It's not yet 7 in the morning, but nearby residents with simple cleaning tools in hand are already making their way to Tiji's registration venue. Once cleanup efforts are underway, residents' lives will gradually return to normal. Since the Tsuji Philippines chapter implemented the Cash for Work program in Tacloban on November 20th, more than 190,000 disaster survivors have signed up to take part in the cleanup efforts. And in a little over 10 days, not only have streets become cleaner, but some residents have also been inspired to do more. One such person is 33-year-old Riyadh, who had initially only signed up to take part in the Cash for Work program. However, two days later, Riyadh decided to become a volunteer instead and gave up her pay to help those in greater need. It's 3 in the afternoon and participants of the Cash for Work program in Tacloban City are already done for the day. Everyone starts heading over to Jasmine Square. Among the crowd is 33-year-old Ria and 31-year-old Dory. Although it has only been a little over 10 days since the two have joined the Cash for Work program, the pair are now volunteers for Tsuji. Ria's home is situated alongside the seashore not far from Jasmine Square. Today, volunteers accompany Ria home, only to find what's left of her home is just a pile of debris. When the typhoon hit, we were trapped inside our home. My kids and I couldn't get out because the door was jammed. I don't know how we managed to escape in the end, but I know it was God who gave me the strength to open that door and get my kids and myself to safety. Although Ria lost her home, fortunately she did not lose her family. Two days after she joined Sidi's Cash for Work program, she decided to forgo her pay, instead choosing to serve her fellow residents. You Tsuji volunteers don't even notice, yet you are helping us. This makes me want to help my fellow people too. Even if I don't get paid, it's alright. It's okay for me. Everyone say thank you. Another local who wanted to lend a helping hand is Dory. After learning that assistance is needed at the work site, she immediately signed up to become a volunteer and has found much joy in her new task. I'm so happy even my, my husband was enjoying because he managed the new, the new registration. Now each morning, Ria and Dori would arrive on site to help with administrative work. The only wish is that their contributions can help their fellow residents stand up tall and strong once again. The Magallanes is cleaned already. So one worker said it is the new hero. The new hero in Tacloban is the 2 T. On the first day of its implementation, 620 people arrived to take part in the Cash for Work program. And between November 20th and December 2nd, in the span of 13 days, more than 200,000 people have joined in the cleanup efforts. We tried our best to seek out other areas where we can implement the program. Mr. Zhenyan's great love and compassion has really given us the confidence to strive on. Tsuji volunteers hand over 500 Philippines pesos to local residents. As Master Zhenyan hopes to help disaster survivors get back on their feet as soon as possible, participants in the Cash for Work program are receiving two times more pay than the minimum wage. Grateful for Tsuji's assistance, local residents even designed a t-shirt decorated with the words, I love Tsuji. These efforts mark the first step to rebuilding their homes. We bought rice, milk, as well as medication for their families. Seeing the look in their eyes, filled with so much anticipation, hope and gratitude that we were able to help them, my heart really goes out to them. 
Streets that once lay in ruins are now clean and bustling once again. This wouldn't have been possible without the combined efforts of participants, who soon realized that they found the strength within themselves to get back on their two feet again. Following the devastation of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines on November 20th, Tsuji began its cash forward program where participants are paid 500 Philippine pesos each day. Thanks to the program, now the lives of the disaster survivors have gradually returned to normal. To show their appreciation to the Tsuji Foundation, the disaster survivors wrote down their words of gratitude on posters. Typhoon Haiyan left a trail of destruction in the Philippines. Massive debris cluttered up the streets. Helpless disaster survivors put their hands together in prayer with tears on their face. To help on November 20th, Tsuji launched the Cash for Work program to pay the survivors for cleaning up their communities, giving them much needed emotional support. Tsuji made us realize if we want change, we need to work. After the disaster, we lost our livelihood. Thankfully, Tsuji offered us this opportunity. Holding back their tears, more and more survivors joined Tsuji volunteers in cleaning up their homes and communities. It's wonderful. The Cash for Work program helps my family a lot. When we are in desperate need of assistance, the Tsuji Foundation is the only NGO that came to help us. The citizens of Takoban City are all grateful to the Tsuji Foundation. With your presence, at least para kami nabuhayan. Setting aside their grief, these disaster survivors wrote down words of gratitude for the selfless volunteers. With Tsuji volunteers' support, these disaster survivors are on the path to recovery. On November 8, Super Typhoon Haiyan made landfall in the central Philippines around 4 in the morning, bringing death and destruction. The storm's maximum wind speed of nearly 380 kilometers per hour made the strongest tropical cyclone since satellite imaging became available in 1970. While the country's location on the Pacific Ring of Fire makes it prone to natural disasters, climate changes due to global warming may have played a role as well. Taiwan's high-speed rail can run as fast as over 300 kilometers per hour. Now imagine this is the wind speed of a typhoon. The average wind speed was at around class 17. However, the speed of its maximum gust was as fast as the high-speed rail. It was the most powerful typhoon that we have ever seen since 1970. Typhoon Haiyan made landfall in the Philippines with a maximum gust at near 380 km per hour, near the center. Such brute force knocked down all cars and homes in its path, scarring the survivors. Looking from the midair, it seems the central Philippines have been completely decimated. More than 5,000 lives were lost, and over 4.3 million people became homeless. However, such tragedy is coming here. Situated in the Pacific Ring of Fire, this country is prone to wrath of typhoons, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions, plus the warm water of the Pacific Ocean to the east, with temperatures as high as 30 degrees Celsius, helps give birth to tropical cyclones. Eight to nine storms are expected to make landfall every year, but this year the number reached 20. The central area has seen quite a lot of development. Perhaps as people continue to build and develop, they forgot the importance of coexisting with the environment. Besides geography, at the recently concluded UN Climate Change Conference in Poland, the Philippines' representative expressed that climate change also played a vital role. 
We've been having storms, we've been having flooding in our country, but the intensity, the frequency, the gravity of the, the damage that these typhoons are causing to our country and our people, these are not normal. If it's not climate change, I don't know how else to call it. Taiwan researchers believe it is too early to conclude that climate change plays a direct role simply by observing Haiyan. However, one thing is for certain. The sea temperature has risen due to climate change. And according to WMO, sea water temperature around the Philippines has increased by 1 degree Celsius. Around the world, the surface temperature is now 0.5 degrees Celsius higher than it was 20 years ago. This means storms have more energy to feed on making superstorms more common. The common consensus is that in the future, there will be more powerful typhoons that carry more strength and rain. The rainfall at the center might be significantly higher. Climate change has also raised the sea level by about 25 centimeters around the world. Thus, when a storm strikes, island nations face an even deadlier storm surge. Smaller islands may not have natural barriers and are less susceptible to storm surge. If the sea level rises by 3 to 5 meters when a typhoon hits, the surge would be no different from that of a tsunami. It has to be a climate-proof um, community um, and a resilient um, community to be able to, um, to adapt to the changing weather patterns. Let's imagine the scenario, what if Typhoon Haiyan was to move north and struck Taiwan instead? How will it impact us? Had Haiyan struck Taiwan instead, would the island have truly been ready? Global warming and climate change are nothing new. However, reports of natural disasters inadvertently caused by global warming continue to shock the world. If something is not done soon, can we truly bear the consequences? To help the Typhoon Haiyan survivors in the Philippines, Sudhu volunteers in Durban, South Africa, also mobilized to canvas for donations in the local community. They not only led community members to join in prayers for the Filipinos, but also encouraged them to donate spare chains to help the less fortunate. Let's take a look. In South Africa's Durban, local volunteers are showing the latest update of the Philippines' recent disaster to local residents. Over 80 participants crowd this smoke garage in order to get the latest information. Although not knowing much about the country, numerous participants still want to do their part to help Typhoon Haiyan survivors. Even though it begins to rain, their passion to help out does not wane. Once the rain stops, participants join in prayers, wishing for a harmonious world full of disasters. Apart from praying for a speedy recovery of the Philippines, volunteers also canvassed for donations from the participants. Despite living in poverty themselves, many local residents still partake their share to help the less fortunate. A trickle of love from the other side of the world will definitely help Haiyan survivors get back on their feet as quickly as possible. We go back to the Philippines at the end of the show. Team of members from Taiwan, Indonesia, Malaysia and the city of Manila held a free clinic at a church in Palo District, Tacloban City. Through the free clinic, medical personnel not only cure sickness but also provided disaster survivors with much needed emotional support. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Die Headlines. Goodbye.